A book of mottos, or a commonplace book, is a delightful lifelong habit. Let's talk about how to get that habit started. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. I just pulled this notebook off my little reading table and opened to the first page, and I can't stop smiling at the diversity of wisdom and wit recorded there. First is a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. I decided to accept the fact that a man must be what he is. Life must be lived as it is. You do not live at all if you do not learn to adapt yourself to your life as it happens to be. Next is an outstanding sentence from a letter Jane Austen wrote to a friend. It gives such a perfect example of her wit and her wonderful way with words. Excellent sweetness of you to send me such a nice long letter. It made its appearance with one from my mother soon after I and my impatient feelings walked in. And last on the page is this idea to ponder from Michelangelo. There's no hurt that's equal to time lost. This little notebook is full of excerpts and quotations and poetry that have quickened my enthusiasm and touched my heart over many years of reading. I keep it on my reading table, right beside the stack of books that I'm currently reading, so it's right at hand to record any ideas that jump off the page at me. Some people call it a commonplace book. Charlotte Mason called it a book of mottos. Whatever you want to call it, this notebook is a valuable tool for your students and your education. Charlotte said, In the reading of the Bible, of poetry, of the best prose, the culling of mottos is a delightful and most stimulating occupation, especially if a motto book be kept, perhaps under headings, perhaps not. It would not be a bad idea for children to make their own yearbook with a motto for every day of the year culled from their own reading. What an incentive to a good day it would be to read in the morning as a motto of our very own choice and selection, and not the voice of an outside mentor, Keep ye the law, be swift in all obedience. School Education, page 135. That line, Keep ye the law, be swift in all obedience, is from a Kipling poem. So the idea is that as your student reads all of these great authors, he records any ideas that strike him in the words of that author. In this notebook, he can collect all of those great ideas in one place for quick reference and repeated instruction and inspiration. This simple practice is a wonderful technique of self-education for several reasons. It encourages the habit of coming to a book with a mind on the lookout, alert and engaged, looking for good ideas. The exercise of handwriting, the quotations, provides regular practice and good penmanship. The quotes that are recorded offer continual moral encouragement and inspiration. And I love how Charlotte once again demonstrated her foundational principle of respect the child as a person by letting the student pick and choose those quotations that are meaningful to him. Think of it this way. We purposefully introduce to the student many great authors with living ideas. The student, then, purposefully records his favorite living ideas from those great authors. That's a book of mottos or a commonplace book. So let me give you three practical suggestions for how to help your student get started in this delightful, lifelong practice. As with any writing exercise, some children will be ready earlier than others. I like to make it an optional activity beginning about fourth grade and then an actual assignment beginning about seventh grade. All right, first suggestion. Schedule an outing with the child. Stop at a favorite cafe for a bit and introduce the idea of the book of mottos. 
discuss what it is, and mention some of the benefits of keeping one. Present this notebook as a practice that indicates a rite of passage into a grown-up's activity. Maybe show the child your own book of mottos or commonplace book and briefly share how it has enriched your own life. And then go shopping for a special journal of the child's choice. Second suggestion. Try to think of the book of mottos as a helpful life habit that you want to instill in your child rather than just a school assignment that has to be completed. To help your student wrap his head around this practice, you'll want to demonstrate how to cull inspiring quotes from books that you're reading. So perhaps when you're doing a family read aloud, have your radar tuned for any potential quotes. After the reading is finished, you might take the child aside and point out that sentence or passage, just as a potential, but don't force it. The book of mottos is your child's own collection, so defer to the child's decision of what to include or not include in his notebook. You could also scan a book that the child will be reading independently and look for potential excerpts. And then when you have your narration and discussion times together, you could point out those excerpts as possibilities and ask him if he found any. Third suggestion, use accountability to help your child cultivate the habit of adding to his book of mottos. Whenever you decide to make it an assignment, you might set up a designated time to work on it. A good place to start is to require two or three lines per week. So maybe on Friday, you'll gather at the table with your notebooks and some of the living books that you've read from that week. Discuss some of the ideas that were read, and together identify some possible passages for adding to the book of mottos. Then let your student decide which quotation or passage he wants to transcribe that week and give him time to do it right then. As he gains experience and confidence in identifying what kinds of ideas he can put in his collection, remind him that he can add to his book of mottos anytime. He doesn't have to wait for that designated Friday session. In fact, if you start requiring two or three lines per week when your student is in seventh grade, by the time he's in high school, he'll probably be ready to continue his book of mottos on his own time. And at that point, you might just do a check-in every week or so to make sure he's added at least three lines and to encourage him to keep going with that habit. Keep in mind, it will be a gradual process for some children, and others will take to it like a duck to water. With some, you're going to need to help them ease into it, and others will just jump in with a splash. Either way, use the book of mottos as an opportunity to knit your hearts together over great words that communicate great ideas. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe through iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version of this podcast, or you can read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.